Target is their Dark Steel Citadel. That seems incorrect. That looks like a misclick. Wait, what? Oh, I see what just happened. Wow, that's good. That was not a misclick. Because they targeted the Dark Steel Citadel and that resolve last, they get their Stark back. Wow, that's insane. Today at Commander Replay, we take a look at this Cole CEDH list and find out if we can survive repeatable removal from Stark of Wrath. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, help support me and save 15% on singles by using the promo code REPLAY at MothershipATX.com. Commander Replay t-shirts, available in orange and colors beside orange. Welcome back everyone, playing some CEDH today with Cole the Forge Master. Take a look at this opening hand. Uh, two lands, Signet Mox Amber, feels pretty good, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. I tried one game with this deck already and gambled on turn one and discarded my second land and had a handful of two drops and that was real bad. Ended up losing that game. Never drew another land, and uh, it was pretty miserable. So I'm happy about the fact that this one has uh, mana in it. So this isn't going to be like a tier 1 CEDH type game. This is going to be like a tier 2, tier 2.5 two type of thing. I told opponents still really new with this deck, just trying to feel it out. So, you know, running into Thassa's Oracle every single time isn't going to be ideal for that, while still just kind of like learning the deck and learning the combo and that sort of thing. But should still be a very spiky game. And with that, that'll bring it to our turn one. We draw a Recruiter of the Guard. Uh, let's play the Spectator Seating. Play the Mox Amber. Get Steel Shaper's Gift. Mask of Immolation is interesting. I think I might go for Skull Clamp. Because we need to get our way into a zero drop. I'm thinking the Skull Clamp. I'm feeling that right now. So we'll pass like that. So yeah, I'm still learning the lines with this deck. I've only played one game, and really, I didn't really play that game. I played two cards, then did nothing. So, <laughs> is that really playing a game of Magic? But, Patreon support herself asked me to build a coal deck. Uh, I don't think he's a CEDH player, as far as I'm aware. So, we'll probably check out a non-CEDH build at some point. But I wanted to play this, because I wanted to understand where the ceiling of this deck is. Um, I think that's a handy thing to have around. I do think that this deck is very strong. So I wanted to see the combo one time and just figure out like how strong it is and then try to figure out like how much you should water it down for a non-CEDH game of Magic. So we'll see. Uh, opponent gets themselves a Ruby Medallion. There's a Wayfarer's Bobble, uh, Mana Vault, and Lodestone Bobble for opponents. Um, there's a Gemstone Cavern. Not the best when it's not in your opener, but we'll play the Command Tower right here. I guess we'll get... I guess we'll get our... Does our Commander matter? Yeah, we could get our commander, we could get the Skull Clamp, or we could go Relic Seeker. I think I'm actually on Relic Seeker. Because if we can get that off and go search for another equipment, I think that'll be pretty cool, especially one that has a free equip cost. So we are playing Cole the Forge Master, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, if it was enchanted or equipped, return it to its owner's hand. Creature tokens you control that are enchanted or equipped get plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. So the plan is find some free creatures put an equipment on them, sacrifice them to something that does damage or makes mana, and loop that repeatedly. And uh, that's basically the game plan here. Uh, I've only seen one non-CEDH call deck so far. That deck was very fast at one on turn six, I think. Uh, as far as I can tell, the combo looks very fast, very mana efficient. Probably one of the most mana efficient combos in Boros. I think the only thing even close is maybe Zerda. But the one difference here is that there are more redundant options for each of the cards. The problem with Zerda is Grim Monolith is like $120 or whatever it's at now. And you basically need that. And then you need like you need Enlightened Tutor and any tutors available to go find it. So just that in and of itself is going to be expensive and doesn't give you a lot of options where there's a decent number of equipment that will work for this deck. There's a decent number of zero drops, none of which are too expensive. And I, generally, if you're trying to build like top tier CEDH, you're probably not worried about the budget, but just the fact that there's more redundancy for each card type that you need to assemble the combo does help a lot. Brings back to our turn. There's an Ancient Den. Um, no artifact stacks yet, that's good news, so we'll play the Ancient Den, play the Boros Signet, let's go to combat, swig into Mugen, cause no blockers. Destroy target artifact or creature, that is actually going to be a problem for us. Um, hmm, get renowned. We get to search for an equipment. There's a Mask of Immolation, there's a Mortar Pod. Mortar Pod does one damage, Stark unfortunately is, has two toughness. Ooh, Sai of the Shinobi is interesting. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can free equip it. Maybe we'll go for the Mortar Pod since it has the built-in damage. I think that's going to be a pretty good thing. I'm going to cast Coal right here. 
I don't know if opponent would shoot it yet, because then we take Stark, and then we could probably blow up the Ruby Medallion, and I'm sure they wouldn't appreciate that. Uh, I don't want to show the Skull Clamp yet because of Stark. From, they've probably seen it from the uh, Steel Shaper's Gift, but don't want to expose it yet. Potentially need more removal in this deck. I haven't been playing that much CEDH lately, not since Commander Legends came out, so I know a lot of things have changed. Uh, th I've definitely seen the Sakashima Krark deck, and that one's kind of insane. That can win on, like, turn two. It's unbelievably fast. Does struggle with Hate Bears a bit, though. Oh, maybe next turn we can go, like, Mortar Pod, get the Germ, sacrifice the Germ, then try to equip Mortar Pod to something else, and they might interact, but might be able to make that work and then get the Stark out of play. Let's take a look at what our opponents are playing, by the way. First up, we have Seven Deadly Sins piloting Bruce Tarl and Silas Wren. They said this is going to be a Walking Ballista combo deck with some Black Blade Reforged backup. Like I said, we're not playing Tier 1 decks today, um, so they're not doing the Ad Nauz Thorical thing. But at the highest tiers, you would definitely expect that. Next up in the middle, we've got Mugen 80 piloting Urza Lord High Artificer. I'm curious to see this one. I haven't seen Urza in a while. Um, I'm not sure where that deck is at right now in terms of CEDH. Um, I mean, I know it's still the stacks pieces are insane in that deck. They can generate absurd amounts of mana with all the zero drops. It looks like they're kind of off to a bit of a slow start right now, though. But uh, I'm not actually sure what the win in that deck. I don't know if it's just like stacks and beat down with 1010 artifacts, which... It's a reasonable, reasonable plan. And, like, other good blue stuff, but... Yeah, I'm not sure, so we'll see. And then finally, we've got Popper R. Bus piloting Stark of Wrath. Not one that you normally see at CEDH tables, but I've faced this Stark deck a few times. And the fact that it's very interactive, I think, will make it very strong for this setting. I'm not sure exactly what the win is. There might be some Underworld Breach type stuff in there. <laughs> Popper said, I played this deck against you before. Strong enough to make Dave annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, repeatable removal is definitely a good thing, so not exactly sure what their win condition is, but it's definitely going to be highly interactive, and that'll be a thing. So I wonder with Urza coming down if, like, oh, never mind. That's a mana drain. Does opponent have a free counter? Nope. Let's the Urza go. Opponent's going to have some mana coming to him next turn. That seems pretty good. Problem now, though, that uh, Stark is going to untap. Majorite Stone. Oh, they can do it twice. Ew. Well, that's not great. That is not a great. By the way, I think Gemstone Caverns is getting reprinted, which badly needs to happen. These things have gotten really expensive. Uh, mostly because of CDH play, the ability to have two lands on your first turn is really strong. Only comes up like 8% of the time, but when it does happen, it's good. I guess in CDH you're more likely to mulligan down a little bit further, so give you some extra percentage points there, but yeah, they expensive. I own zero of these in paper. It's a thing. A Sunbaked Canyon. Let's go ahead and play the Sunbaked Canyon. I think we try to deal with the Stark right here. It's going to be a bad time for us, so. Mortar Pod coming in. Living Weapon. Shoot Stark. Mortar Pod on Relic Seeker. Yeah, they're going to respond. Target is their Dark Steel Citadel. That seems incorrect. That looks like a misclick. Uh, now they're going to try to destroy our Mortar Pod. This is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, can't do much with that. Cannot do much with that. That sucks. We can't control the Stark. Wait, what? Oh, I see what just happened. Because they... Oh, wow, that's good. That was not a misclick. Because they targeted the Darksteel Citadel and that resolve last, they get their Stark back. Wow, that's insane. Ew. Well, this is going to be a controlling type game. I guess we just do some attacking then. Spread some damage. Get everyone off 40 life. Next plan is probably Heliod's intervention and try to get rid of some of their artifacts, because... So our sack outlet is down. That's not the best. Yeah, probably just going to be like Heliod's Intervention and maybe try to get a Recruiter of the Guard, use Skull Clamp, do that kind of thing. Wow, that's good. He's uh, he's come a long way with that Stark deck. I remember seeing it maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and uh, yeah. Thing is nasty. <laughs> Repeatable removal, so good. Artifacts and creatures, too. Mana Drain for opponent, they're going to get a whole bunch of mana. Four extra. Demonic Tutor for opponent. Seems bad. Intuition. Gross. Yeah, this isn't great. Walking Ballista. Ice Cron Scepter. Codex Shredder. So whatever we put in the graveyard, let's read this thing again. Uh, we choose one. That one goes to the hand. The other two to the graveyard. They'll be able to get one back with the Silas Wren. Codex Shredder to hand? Codex Shredder to hand, I guess. Ether Spell Bomb. Pretty annoying. Pretty annoying card. Codex Shredder. Silas gonna swing over to the Urza opponent. What'd they get back? They got the they got the lodestone bobble back, so just trying to set up with lands, I think, or maybe trying to mess up tutors. You can do both. You can do both of that card. Divining top for opponent. Oh, the volcanic offering. Wow, that's gonna be good. 
Choose target non-basic land we don't control. I guess it's this mana confluence. Silas and Cole gonna go down. Volcanic offering so good. Opponent's gonna Aether Spellbomb, Silas back to their hand, okay. Opponent's gonna Swords the Stark. Ooh, that is interesting. Uh, ooh, they're gonna pop our Signet. It's not great. It's not great. You're gonna untap it. Did they do it in the wrong order? Or are they just gonna take two things down? Oh, right, yeah, no. They can still just take two things down. What else would they like to hit? Second one is gonna be our Ancient Den. Lovely, lovely. This dark deck, man, oh, preys upon creature and artifact decks. We gain the Stark, it gets exiled. Signet down, Ancient Den down, Volcanic Offering, Coal down. Back to the command zone. There's a land, let's go Recruiter. Use the ability. A lot of things we can get. Ooh, Impulsive Pilferer seems good. Let's get Impulsive Pilferer. Play Wooded Foothills, crack a Wooded Foothills. Get Plateau, play Impulsive Pilferer. Who are we poking? Poke Pauper, since he's got the most life. I think next turn, we might be able to win it. So we play the land, Cole costs four, we cast Cole. We play Skull Clamp, equip Skull Clamp to... No, that won't die. Because of the Cole ability. No, token creatures, that's not a token. Okay, so yeah, we can equip that, it'll die, it'll make a treasure. It'll go back to our hand. The treasure allows us to recast ourselves, so we essentially draw our deck. And then we can use some fast mana. We just need some fast mana to be able to cast something that helps us finish it. That assumes that this isn't a counter spell, though. Dockside Extortion is for opponent. Seems good. Five treasures. Silas, back to play. Looks like one short of activating the Codex Shredder. What we can hope for right here is land tap out to recast Urza. Spellbook. Codex Shredder of their own. You can force someone to mill a card. I didn't see who. Themselves, maybe. Takes a look with the Divining Top. The problem right now is a counter spell. Some sort of interaction. Opponent over here is down to one card, so that's good. They've got four cards, plus three mana that they've been holding up. Now, if opponent just tries to recast Stark, then it eats the counter? That might be the window for us. Oh, here comes the Blasphemous Act. Uh, didn't count on that. Did not count on that. Uh, we'll get a treasure token off of the Pilfer. Ooh, window Wheel of Fortune. Ah, I guess that's fine. I like the Skull Clamp, but might just be able to get to the combo. Mugen's got feelings. He's going to counterspell that. We've got a shot. Just need this, uh, just need opponent to not have a counter spell. And I think we're golden. There's a Needle Verge pathway. Hang on to that a sec. Play the Impulsive Pilferer from the Graveyard. Um, it might be tough to get the mana we need. We'll see, we'll see. Let's go for it. Encore the Impulsive Pilferer. Play the Needle Verge. We'll play it on the red side. Let's play it on the white side. Oh, these are all tokens. Uh, well, let's just, I guess we just have to value then. Um... Play the Skull Clamp. I don't care about the damage that much, so we're just gonna we're gonna skip combat. Should be some good card draw though. Oh, opponent's got feelings. Ah, Heliod's intervention. Skull Clamp down. Mage Right Stone down. Bummer. Well, that did not work out. Attack opponents then. <laughs> uh, now we're gonna be living off the top a little bit. I uh, guess we can we can crack a Sunbaked Canyon. Uh, we sacrifice him at the end step. We'll get the three treasures. It'll be helpful mana for next turn, but we are going to need something big. Card draw or reanimation. Uh, pass like that. Game has gotten a little bit grindy. Bruce Tarl into play. Yep. Targets itself. Mox Opal for opponent. Urza into play. Stark back to play. Yep. Mm, yeah, problem now is that the Urza is going to start making a lot of mana and being able to generate a lot of value. Ooh, Mugen's going to forbid the Stark. Doesn't have the uh, cards to buy it back, though, so it does go to the graveyard, thankfully. They're down to one card, but not interested in what the Stark has to offer. <laughs> Love it. There's a Memnite for us. How close are we? Um, Crack the Sunbaked Canyon, I guess. Ooh, Pure Steel Paladin, huh? Need an equipment. Hmm. Play the Gemstone Cavern. Play Memnite. Are we hitting things with Heliod's Intervention this turn? Hmm. I'm worried about what all this is going to do. Uh, we'll get our commander back since that's kind of a big play. That's a mana intense play to make, so let's do that. I mean, if that's the case, do we just tap out for the pure steel paladin also and then hope for the best? Opponent's going to mill a card. Ooh, mills a rustic study. Very nice. Yeah, I think we just kind of tap out and go for it. That way we're ready to do whatever we need to do next turn. Kind of going on the gamble that everyone's low on cards... Hopefully not too much removal, hopefully not too many combo pieces. Mana Vault trigger for opponent. 
He is playing mono red control, though, so I don't know. Maybe we're just going face first into another board wipe. We'll see what happens. Gonna send the Bruce Tarl over to the Stark. Yep, changes their mind. Going back on that plan. I'm gonna draw a card with the Lodestone Bobble. Yep. So Urza's untapped. They've got six lands. They've also got artifacts that can turn into mana. A little bit low on cards, but Urza itself can take care of that. There's a Mind Stone. Gonna activate the Urza ability. See what they hit. It's a Tribute Mage. Seems good. Probably get themselves like an Isochron Scepter or something like that. Wouldn't be the best. Indeed, Isochron Scepter. Doesn't look like they have the follow-up yet. Uh, from there, I think we're going to be holding up this Heliod's Intervention. So that was why I wanted to get the Coal into play, because I know it's the expensive play to make. So now, you know, we're just going to try to hang out for our combo pieces and hold up the Heliod's Intervention as needed. Wouldn't be sad for another wheel, though. Although it would refill the blue player. Any equipment would get us a redraw with the Pure Steel Paladin, which would be nice. I didn't build this decklist, by the way. This was just one that I found on the internet. So I'm curious to see what kind of recursion we have in here. There's a Sabine's Reclamation. No Duretti. I might add a Duretti, personally. Um, you could also go Goblin... Oh, there's a Goblin Engineer. It's a little bit slow, but it would get the job done. We have two wheels, a Jessica's Will. Ugin the Ineffable. Yeah, that one's good. Shoot the Urza. Force him to recast. Yeah, shoot the Urza. Force him to recast. Love it. Come on, something big off the top. This is our time. Talisman is not it. Play a Talisman. Go to combat. He's got one loyalty on it. Uh... Swing into that. I think I'm just going to stay back with everything else. Ugin down. Pass like that. One's going to mill with the Codex Shredder. I think it was this opponent. I think it was the island. Silas Wren into play. One's going to swing with the Bruce Tarl into the Urza opponent. Takes the hit. Six commander. They gain themselves six life. Yeah, that lifelink. <laughs> the rate this game is going, I don't know that anyone's going to combo off. And uh, Beats might get there. <laughs> Tapping out for Urza. Urza coming back. Gonna make another construct. That is the issue. They keep making constructs every time they recast it. 7-7 seven, seven into play. Those are pretty good. Foundry Inspector, pretty good. 10 damage over to Stark. They getting low. Down to 11 they go. Ooh, Memory Jar. Do they use it this turn? Probably not, because they have one land. Problem is we're gonna need instants. Well, uh, maybe we could get us to a Savine's Reclamation. Oh, they're just gonna go for it. Okay. See what instants we run into. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of things that we probably wanted. Two equipment, uh, Robber of the Rich, Dockside, Ancient Tomb, Underworld Breach is a big one. Ew. Uh, that's all on that Savine's Reclamation or Restoration Specialist now. Signet for opponent. Haven't used Robber of the Rich much. I'd like to get more experience with it. I just haven't seen it a lot. Don't actually know if it's that good. Opponent's gonna Vandal Blast the bigger construct. Okay. Lion's Eye Diamond, uh-oh. Memory Jar, we're gonna lose all of these glorious cards. We can find that Savine's Reclamation, though. Lotus Petal is not it. Play the Lotus Petal. I assume one of the other two are going to take them out, so we'll just stay put. Gonna make Mugen Mill. It's an island. Do we blow up all of Urza's stuff before they untap? That's a question. Probably. Let's see what these attacks look like. That itself is an artifact. That's interesting. So Bruce into Stark and this into Urza. It's gonna double strike the Silas. See how they handle this. I might actually shoot the Silas. If they don't block. Yeah, they're going no block, so let's Heliod's Intervention. We can go X8. Yeah, probably just go all of it. Let's get this Ruby Medallion, get the Lion's Eye Diamond, get that. The Construct, get the Cost Reduction, get the Codex Shredder, Mind Stone. Ooh, Divining Top is tapped. Let's get that. Yeah. That's X8. Seems good to me. Big old Heliod's Intervention. Eight targets. Everything getting blown up. Popper down to eight. I guess we could have poked them a little bit if we were going to do that. Uh, they're going to return something. They're going to return the Silas Wren from their graveyard to their hand, probably not wanting to repay the commander cost. Uh, opponent has one activation with Urza. Copy artifact. There aren't too many artifacts left. What are they going for? Gets a mana vault. Okay, looking for a burst of mana. Just going to use that Urza ability. What do they hit? Finale of Revelation. I'm sure this can't be good. Um, although it's a draw X and... I don't think they can pay mana into it. So I think that just gets exiled, right? Or if they cast it for X0. Impulse, okay. We're still good, although Impulse could be pretty good right here. Scrap Mastery, oh my. That's living death for artifacts. This is gonna be ridiculous. Will we even survive it? They have a Lion's Eye Diamond. Hmm. Yeah, this is gonna be spicy. <laughs> We're gonna draw a bunch with Pure Steel Paladin. That'll be cool. Opponent gets an Isochron Scepter. Only two cards in hand. Oh, who got the Isochron Scepter? 
Someone has an Isochron Scepter. Oh, Deadly has the Isochron Scepter. Five cards in hand, that's interesting. Uh, we're going to draw four with the Pure Steel Paladin and get a Mortar Pod. We get our Artifact Land, our Signet. We can actually activate Mortar Pod if we need to. See if they imprint something. So there's our Mortar Pod. We draw. Kobolds. Land. 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 Inventor's Fair. Inventor's Fair is reasonable, though. Does opponent crack this memory jar and look at more cards? They're probably trying to get to their Underworld Breach, is my guess. Yep, there's the memory jar. Will they find it? I think we win on our turn. Opponent does have an Aether Spell Bomb. That's actually a little bit annoying. Ooh, Red Elemental Blast, you say? Altar of Dementia, going to go to the graveyard. Uh, two lands, Phyrexian Walker, Fragmentize. Uh, we have some protection in our hand right now. It's a Thematic Compass. Wheel of Misfortune. Huh. If a blue player wanted to counter that, I would let that happen. How much mana do we actually have? That's two, three, only three. Hmm. I'm an Apostle's Blessing. I'll pay the Phyrexian mana. See if any of the blue players are looking to counter right here. You know what the thing is? We can all pay more than eight life, and Pauper may not actually get extra cards out of this. No counter spells yet. I'll choose blue. Let's see if they fix this, because for a while it was showing... Uh, what each player picked, and that's not great because it's not supposed to do that. But they released a big bug patch last week, I think, and hopefully that's one of the things that they fixed. Opponent's gonna two mana rift the Urza. That's fine to me. Yeah, love it. If they tried to counter that, I would probably try to force that rift through. There's a mana drain. Yeah, we're gonna try to force it through. Did they imprint anything, by the way? I don't think they did. Oh, there's a pyroblast targeting the mana drain. Okay, okay, that is taking care of itself. <laughs> We've got a fun little stack going right here. Wheel of Misfortune, Cyclonic Rift on Urza, Mana Drain, and Pyroblast targeting Mana Drain. Mana Drain targeting the Rift, by the way. Take a look with the Divining Top, of course. Urza back to hand. Opponent can just choose zero so they don't wheel, though, although the Memory Jar will get them. Um, wheel of Misfortune. I think we go eight. We want to find Savine's Reclamation. That gives us a lot of redundancy. Choosing eight. The chosen number is six. Yeah, okay, it doesn't look like that's working right. Mugen chose 75. That's interesting. He chose 99 as a number. Well, I guess he's dead. Uh, didn't expect that. Tormod's Crypt, that's actually kind of bad for us. Jeweled Lotus, more mana. That's good. Uh, ooh, he's going to exile the four-color graveyard, not ours. That's a big deal. Mugen said he was salty. Now, I think he's, he might have been out of it because I think when this memory jar goes off... I think he's back down to like one or two cards, and if they aren't counter spells, I still think we just win. Opponent's gonna crack the lodestone bobble. Oh, I think I think he's also salty that we didn't get bounced. Yeah, that might be it. Because if they hit us with the rift, we're like very close to. Yeah, I see what's happening now. Go to the end step. Thalmatic Compass gonna flip over. Memory Jar gonna do its thing. We've got a Cobalt. Ooh, we have an equipment. Yep, those are good. Uh, we have multiple equipment. We have the card draw equipment. Yeah, think that's gonna be good game. Brings it back to our turn. Opponent will get to draw a card. Turn 10. Wow, what a grindy game. Mono red control. Making life terrible for everyone. There's an unexpectedly absent. Zero cards. Six cards. No mana. Beautiful. Let's try it. Uh, let's get an Inventor's Fair just in case things go wrong. Play the Cobalt. Sigh of the Shinobi will free attach. Uh, we can choose always yes on that. Might as well put a skull clamp on it. Ooh, we can free... Oh, yeah, we can free equip everything. We have a pure steel paladin. That's all free. Uh, we can crack this and then get Ashnod's altar, and then I think we're golden. Really? There's no Ashnod's altar? Huh. Didn't see that coming. Uh, we can get Blasting Station. That'll get the same job done. Blasting Station. Start shooting opponent. Sacrifice the Cobalt. Coal trigger. Skull clamp trigger. Blasting Station. Opponent says he has Fierce in hand. Oh. Well, I think it might be late for that. Yep, opponent scooping it right there. So, yep, we then we replay the Cobalt, attach everything, do it again. And this uh, Blasting Station will untap when a creature comes in. So, yeah. Can't believe we got the win there. That game, long and grindy. We were out of cards. I thought the blue decks were going to get there just because of the value in the card draw. Uh, as soon as we started drawing blanks with the lands, we're like, uh-oh. It's not what you want to be doing with this deck. So, uh, yeah, the deck can be pretty fast. We obviously ran into a lot of control right here. Stark of Wrath is one of those things that, like, when you play CEDH, you're not expecting tons of creature removal. There's usually a little bit of spot removal, not a lot of board wipes, and 
you generally expect your creatures to stay alive. So, you know, the fact that we ran into a control deck that says, nope, you don't get to do that, uh, did slow us down a lot. But it was a nuisance for all of us. So that had to be dealt with before anyone could do anything. But but yeah, it was a fun little game. Not the spikiest CEDH ever. Definitely like tier two, tier two and a half type stuff. Almost kind of teetering down to like high power, not quite CEDH, kind of walking that line a little bit. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.